गुड आफ्टरनून डियर स्टूडेंट्स एंड लर्नर्स नमस्कार यू ऑल आर वॉचिंग अस ऑन ई विद्या चैनल नंबर नाइन एंड आई एम कुसुम प्रसाद सो डियर स्टूडेंट्स एंड लर्नर्स नाउ गेट रेडी टू अंडरस्टैंड सोशल साइंस एंड दिस सेशन इज फॉर क्लास नाइन स्टूडेंट्स एंड टूडेज चैप्टर इज इंडिया साइज एंड लोकेशन एंड टू टीच दिस सब्जेक्ट अवर टूडेज एक्सपर्ट इज मिस्टर पुष्पेंद्र सिंह सर नमस्कार सर वेरी वेलकम इन दिस सेशन थैंक यू सो मच मैम थैंक यू सो मच पुष्पेंद्र सर इज पी जी टी जोग्राफी फ्रॉम प्रूडेंस स्कूल अशोक विहार दिल्ली so tell uh, sir we'll tell you about this chapter but before we start this chapter we want to tell us about our various medium where you can send your queries your feedback so dear students and learners you can contact us through our phone number that is 8800440559 and you can also email us on our email id and our id is dth.class9 at the rate ciet.nic.in and before we start this session we want to share a very important message regarding g20 we are proud that india assumed the g20 presidency and will convene the g20 leaders summit for the first time in the country in 2023 a nation deeply committed to democracy and multilateralism india g20 presidency would be a watershed moment in our history as it seeks to play a very important role by finding pragmatic global solution for the well-being of all and in doing so manifest the true spirit of vasudev kutumbakam or the world is one family so now we've moved to our session and this session is for class 9 students and the subject we are going to study is social science india size and location we moved to our expert mr pushpendra singh sir thank you so much ma'am yes, thank you so much so before we start this session uh, is there anything you want to explain to our students and learners who all are watching uh, definitely ma'am definitely so uh, this chapter india size and location we need to understand few things before we uh, uh, learn this about this so uh, there are basic requirements which we need to understand though we have read about it uh, in previous chapters also or previous classes also we have read a little bit about them so let us try to understand what we are going to cover and what are the prerequisite things which we will be doing here also so uh, if we talk about this uh, chapter so we are going to do india size and location so that means india's location its size india and the world its neighbors so these are the things which we are going to study in this chapter but before we go here we need to understand few basic concepts which must be known to us and in those concepts the four most concepts are latitudes and longitudes if we talk about latitudes and longitudes you must have read these concepts in grade 6 7th and 8th so here a little elaboration is needed because though in your chapter it is not mentioned but everywhere because you have to identify where india is located in the global perspective in your uh, world map so that can only be understood through when you are able to identify the location of india in perspective to latitudes and longitudes so let us try to understand what are latitudes so if you see these lines latitudes and longitudes if you see here circle round circles these are latitudes and if you have to define about what are latitudes so latitudes are those imaginary lines remember these are imaginary lines which are drawn on the surface of the globe in east and west direction parallel to equator and they make a perfect circle and uh, every 1 degree we have one latitude and these are imaginary lines as i told you in the same manner if we talk about the longitude so you will be able to understand these are also imaginary lines which join north pole with the south pole and they do not make a perfect circle instead they make a semi circle so if you see here longitudes lines run parallel uh, north and south whereas latitude uh, lines runs east and west the lines measure distance in degrees if we see here so these are latitude if you see this is equator lines which has been depicted here whereas if you see longitude so red line that is a uh, longitude now where is 0 degree 0 degree when we say latitude that is equator 
So it is an imaginary belt that runs halfway point between North Pole and South Pole. This line makes a perfect circle and this makes up largest possible circle on the globe and it divides the globe into two equal halves north and south. So if we see here, so this is the equator line. Now coming to the next concept related with this prime meridian longitude when we talk about where is zero degree longitude. So this is also known as prime meridian or G MT Greenwich Mean Time which runs from United Kingdom, France, Spain, Western Africa and Antarctic. All the watches of the world are matched with the time of these places located on Greenwich Mean Time or Prime Meridian. Now, so this is the line which is at the center if you see here. Now, international date line, this is an other imaginary line which we must know because when we talk about this international date line, it clearly separates the globe into two parts. As you cross this line from west to east, so from Africa to Asia, if you are going, you will gain one day in time. Whereas if you are going from Asia to America, you will lose one day. So sometimes you are asked whether you can uh, live the same day. Yes, it is possible that you can live the same day twice in your life, but you will also lose one day if you are coming from America to India. So if we see here, by combining latitudes and longitudes, we can derive the location of a Place and it can be pinpointed directly where India or any place is located. We will read in higher classes all these things where coordinates are there, how we can reach there. These are told to you. So if we see here, see this world map and in this world map, if you see where India is located, there is one line which is crossing from India. Which line is that? We will see about it. Right now, if you see, it is 80 degree line. But as we talk about hemisphere, so by using equator and prime meridian, as you have seen, that we can divide the world into four hemispheres, which are known as northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere by equator. And if we talk about the prime meridian, so this is eastern hemisphere and western hemisphere. So if we see this, a little you, uh, clarity you will get here. So uh, in the first picture, if you see, this is prime meridian, which is dividing the globe into two hemisphere, that is Eastern hemisphere and Western hemisphere. Whereas if you see the second picture here, equator is dividing the globe into two hemisphere, Northern hemisphere and Southern hemisphere. So you need to understand there are four hemisphere, which we must know because this is very important when we identify where India is actually located. So we also need to know that the entire world has been divided into 24 time zones corresponding to 24 hours. So what every time zone has approximately one hour time difference. So if we see that means uh, every degree has four minutes time. So every 15 degree into four, that means we will reach approximately one hour, 60 minutes time that is. So as the earth rotates, the sun shines in the different areas moving from east to west during the course of day. So places that have the same longitude will be in the same time zone across the globe. So that we need to understand. So uh, here, if we see India is in the northern hemisphere because it is in the north of equator and India is in the, in the eastern hemisphere because it is in the east of prime meridian. That's why to be specific, what is the actual location of India if we talk about it is north eastern hemisphere that we need to understand clear and means that this question is uh, obviously in MCQ you are most of the time asked that in which hemisphere India lies. Accurate answer is uh, eastern and that to northern hemisphere. So northeastern hemisphere is the correct answer. We must understand like that. 
Now, if we talk about the India, so India is one of the ancient civilization in the world and it has achieved multifaceted socio-economic progress during the uh, last five, uh, say, seven decades or more. So it has moved forward displaying remarkable progress in the field of agriculture, industry, technology and overall economic development. India has also contributed significantly to the world development. So if we talk about the location of India, you will be able to understand that India entirely relies in the northern hemisphere from 8 degree and 4 minute north to 36 degree and a 6 minute uh, 37 degree and 6 minute north whereas if we talk about the longitudes so its longitudinal extent is 68 degree 7 minute east and 97 degree 25 minute east so it divides uh, topic of cancer divides india into two equal halves and when we talk about the topic of cancer you need to understand this is a 23 degree and 30 minute north latitude line and it divides India into two parts. One is the tropical region, another is the subtropical region. So, towards uh, south, we have tropical region, whereas towards north, we have subtropical region. So, in southeast, Andaman and Nicobar Island lies in the Bay of Bengal, whereas in southwest, Lakshadweep Island groups lies in the Arabian Sea. So, see here the exact location of India, how it is located. So, above equator, it is located. And if you go through this here, the hemisphere, so eastern hemisphere, it is clearly and northern hemisphere, it is clearly mentioned here. So probably you will be able to understand that India lies in north eastern hemisphere. Now, so the total area, if we talk about the India, so total area is 3.28 million square kilometer, which is approximately 2.4% of the world total area. And it is the seventh largest country in the world in terms of the land mass. It has a land boundary approximately 15,200 kilometer and the total length of the coastline is including the Andaman and Nicobar Island is 7516.6 km to be specific. So in the northwest, north and northeast of India, Young Ford Mountain bounds it. Whereas in south about 22 degree north latitude, India narrows and finally tapers towards the south and in Indian Ocean. It divides it into two seas that is Arabian Sea and Bay of Bengal Sea in the east. If we see, compare the world area, so we will be able to see that India accounts only 2.4%. If this diagram, if we are able to understand that this is the entire landmass available for the world, so India is having only 2.4% of the total geographical area of the world. Whereas if we compare about the population, so India accounts for more than 17% of the world population at present. So, if we see the land frontier, as we discussed that uh, the land frontier is approximately 15,200 kilometer. So, you see the black line which is just marking from uh, Gujarat. It is going upwards till Pakistan, then we are Afghanistan, we are touching from Duran line and then coming to China and then Nepal, Bhutan and then coming to Myanmar and Bangladesh. So we are able to understand that this entire line is 15,200 kilometer. This is a land frontier of India. Whereas if we talk about the length of the coastline, so you will be able to see here. Here we have only marked the red one. If you see this, this is a land uh, water. Uh, we share the coastline and this is 7516.6 kilometer in which island groups are also included. So if we see here the extent of India from north to south and east to west, you will be able to see from north to south, it is 3,214 kilometer in length from K Kashmir to Kanyakumari. Whereas if we go from the Gujarat to Arunachal Pradesh, it is approximately 2,933 kilometers. So you need to understand there is a difference. If you see the degrees, if you calculate 30 degree, approximately 30 degree difference is there. But then you see here 
that uh, there is a difference of approximately 200 or 300 kilometers. Why this happens? Because India, if you see in the global perspective and in globe, India tapers towards the north. And because of this, the length increases from Kashmir to Kanyakumari. So if we go, so uh, another question arises that uh, in Gujarat, and uh, Arunachal Pradesh, there is a time, uh, time difference of two hours. And why does this happen? That means 30 degree and there is a two hours time difference. But if we see that watches show the same time despite this, why does, does this happen? So as I told you earlier also that approximately every one degree is approximately four minutes. So what happens? Uh, we find out that 29 degree uh, 30 degree if we calculate it so it will be approximately 120 minutes that means two hours time difference will be there but still the watches show the same time because india has selected only one place and one line and that line passes from mirzapur it is 82 degree and 30 minute east longitude or we can say that 82 and a half degree east longitude so, if we talk about the India's expansion, as I have already discussed that, but here you need to see the uh, line standard meridian. It is passing here, 82 degree, 30 minute east, as you see dotted line, it is represented there. So, you will be able to understand that. Now, comparison, if we do that, where does India stand? As I, uh, we have discussed that India is the seventh largest country in terms of area. So you will find out the a comparison is there. So Russia, 17.9 million he hectare in a square kilometer. Whereas India is only 3.28 million square kilometer. That means India is approximately five times smaller than Russia. So, uh, India and the world, if we talk about the present uh, conditions where India is located and how India is interacting with the world. So, we need to understand the past also, what has happened with us and how we have interacted with the world. So, India is located in the center of the world between East and West Asia. So, the routes across the Indian Ocean which connect the countries of Europe in the West and the countries in the East. Uh, provide a strategic center location to India. So what happens? The Deccan Peninsula helps India to establish a close contact with West Asia, also Africa and Europe. Whereas from the western coast and uh, whereas we talk about from the eastern coast, it helps to establish a contact with Southeast and East Asia and Australia. And that's why we are able to understand that India is located centrally. So the ocean which is south of India gives the name. So you can understand the importance of India. No other country has the name of well, an ocean on its name. It is India and on which name we have Indian Ocean. So you can understand the importance of India as a uh, means a strategic location which it has in the world context. So the land routes, if we talk about the ancient land routes, when uh, there were not waterways were not discovered. So what used to happen? India had relations with the Roman Empire and various Western nations and Eastern nations. If you talk about the Buddhism, it has reached till uh, towards China and Japan. How it has reached? Because we had land contact with them. Even the things which we get in the Western countries like Rome, civilization and Greece were uh, evidences have been found that Indian civilization, the traces of Indian civilization that we had a contact with them, those have been found. So land routes helped India in exchange of ideas and commodities since ancient time. If you remember that it, uh, you have already uh, always been taught or told that India was a golden bird. And let me tell you that the discovery of the world happened only because the Europeans wanted to discover India, a land with the golden bird. 
they wanted to do the trade with india that was the main reason which led to the discovery of the world so india have propagated the ideas of upanishad and ramayana the stories of panchatantra the indian numerical and decimal system as you know that india has discovered this decimal system or zero aryabhat was uh, discovered so these things if we talk about and indian spices are still famous across the globe as these were famous at uh, at the time in the previous uh, years also the influence of greek sculptures and the architectural styles of dome min minarets and west asia can be seen in different parts of india so we can see that how in uh, india is one of the most important nation located centrally in the globe so its neighbors if we talk about so india comprises about uh, 28 states and eight union territories at present so northwest pakistan and afghanistan these are our bordering neighbor neighboring countries in north we have china nepal bhutan and in east we have myanmar and bangladesh whereas in south we have sri lanka and maldives sri lanka and maldives are our southern ocean neighbors they do not share land boundary with india rest of these countries share the land frontier with india so sri lanka is separated from india by a narrow channel of sea formed by the park strait and the gulf of mannar whereas maldives islands are situated to the south of the lakshadweep islands so a peninsula is a piece as we have read about the what is a peninsula peninsula or india when we say so it is a piece of land that is bordered by water on three sides but connected to the mainland on one side so see here india and adjacent countries this is uh, given in your ncert this picture also so adjacent country if you see so afghanistan we share a small border with afghanistan also which is a durand line uh, which is in puk and then pakistan we have uh, nepal bhutan myanmar and bangladesh our southern ocean neighbors if you see here so maldives and sri lanka are given here so if you see so these are our neighboring countries in this picture you will be clearly able to see that where these are located so internet india has always uh, means uh, advantage to be called as the highway of the world because it is centrally located as we have recently discussed that how india is centrally located and what is the importance of india at the head of the indian ocean so in this way we can say uh, you must be having uh, that do you know from the chapter so the southernmost point of indian union is indra point which got submerged under the sea in 2004 during the tsunami and since the opening of suez canal in 1869 so india's distance from europe has been reduced by more than 7000 km before 1947 there were two types of states in india the provinces and princely states provinces were ruled directly by british officials who were appointed by the viceroy whereas princely states were ruled by the local hereditary rulers who acknowledged sovereignty in return to the local autonomy so this is the suez canal as we talked by opening suez canal which is located in egypt you can see and uh, this has reduced the distance between europe and india so if we summarize this chapter so india is known for its rich commercial and cultural heritage and home to some of the oldest civilization in the world like the indus valley civilization india is spread across the no uh, eastern and northern hemisphere yes, india latitudinal uh, stretch between 8 degree and 4 minute north and 37 uh, 6 degree north so latitudinal and longitudinal extent we have done yes sir pushpendra sir it was very interesting session i hope student uh, uh, got many information regarding this chapter and you beautifully explained this chapter sir thank you so much sir thank you so thank much you. thank you so much and dear students and learners before we wind up this session we want to share a very important announcement information regarding ncert books it's very important for our dear students and learners and our parents ncert textbooks 
for 2023-24 are available throughout the country. These textbooks may be purchased directly from NCERT sale counters located at New Delhi, Ahmedabad, Bangalore, Kolkata and Guwahati. These sale counters will be functional on all the weekdays including gazetted holidays, Saturdays and Sundays from 9.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. And you may also uh, place order for the books online from our website ncertbooks.ncert.gov.in and these books will be delivered at your doorstep with no delivery fee. And if you want the uh, soft copy of the books in PDF version, you can also download free from the NCRT, Diksha and ePartshala website and mobile app. Please visit the website ncert.nic.in to know more about the authorized vendor. So, uh, it's time to wind up this session. Uh, students and learners, you don't go anywhere before uh, because stay connected to EVDA channel. And goodbye. Namaskar.